everybody and welcome to The Flute Practice. Today we are going to be looking at eight reasons why you are not getting the tone that you want on the flute. So let's go check it out. <laughs> So the first thing that you want to look at is whether your embouchure is too tight or maybe too loose. So the too tight embouchure, you will be getting quite a sharp airy sound. And the too loose embouchure, you're going to get the opposite. You're going to get quite like a hollow kind of like, well, kind of also a little bit flat and a bit like sort of um, airy and dark. That kind of thing. So if you're getting either of those sounds, your embouchure might be the culprit. You also always really want to make sure that the aperture, which is the hole formed with your lips, and the actual tone hole of the flute are always really lining up properly. If they are slightly off center or skew, if the you know if the aperture really isn't directly in the middle of that tone hole, you're going to once again get a bit of an airy sound. Now for some of us, we do have an aperture that is slightly off to one or the other side, and that is totally fine. We just need to adjust and make sure that the flute is really lining up with that. So I can show you this. If I'm off to the side, you will hear it. it. By me, it has a bit of a buzz. There's like a little bit of air escaping instead of where really that focused, clean sound comes. So you really want to explore with the position, making sure you're finding really the most focused sound. I've mentioned this in other videos, but you can also see kind of little trail, little kind of like condensation trail on the flute. And if that's going really straight down the center, then you know you're good. Another really important thing to look at is how much of the tone hole are you covering? Are you covering too much? In which case you're going to get, once again, quite a kind of dull, small sound. <laughs> No matter how hard you try to play loud and forte, you're just never going to get that sound. And if you're covering too little, you're going to get a much more open sound, but sometimes a little bit too much, and you're going to get quite an airy, sharp sound again. Now, there was a subscriber who mentioned that, you know, some people do a kind of advertise not covering at all. This is a particular style of playing. You are welcome to explore, explore and experiment. I think as long as you're getting the focus that you want, I'm going to encourage you really to explore this and try out what happens when you move that flute in and out and how much of the tone hole you cover and find the sound that you like, where you really like, ah, that's a sound I love and I want that sound. Especially when we're not covering enough of the tone hole, often the culprit is that the flute is just too high up on the lip. Now, this is something we really want to make sure that we have this nice kind of cushion of lip that covers the hole at the bottom. And if we're too high up, we lose that cushion. We lose a lot of the control, especially when we're doing things like the octaves and, and all those interval jumps. When we are doing dynamics and diminuendos, we have so much amazing control with this bottom lip. And when we are not, when we are too high up on that lip, we lose that control. So I can show you this. I'm very high right now. I'm going to try play an octave. And I'm going to bring it lower. And you can maybe even see I needed to move much less here in my embouchure to make that adjustment. So experiment once again. Move that flute up and down. See what happens. See if there's a moment where you're like, whoa, that is a cool sound. Or maybe, especially in the higher notes, you're like, oh my word, the control and the sound I'm getting up there Often the low notes are easier when it's higher up, which is why a lot of students might start there. But for the long run, you want to be a little bit further down so that you have more control, especially in the higher registers. Another really big problem for your sound can often be tension in your jaw or in your throat. And these two really are quite connected because they have these beautiful muscles that kind of extend. In I'm not going to get into the like full physiology out of all of this, but if you go and Google, the muscles here in the in the jaw and in the throat, you'll see these overlaps. Now, when you have too much tension in your jaw, jaw you kind of lock your jaw in place here. There's a couple of things. Firstly, you will struggle to really get that flexibility in those intervals, in your intonation, in your dynamic control, the whole works. And secondly, you're also going to help create tension in your throat here, which is going to restrict the sound. So you're really going to get a Kind of a sound I was trying to not tense my embouchure 
these things kind of like all work together in in really crazy ways so when the one's happening usually some of the other ones are happening as well i'm gonna now release it all and hopefully you can hear the difference in the sound maybe it's not so clear but I can definitely feel the difference and I think you can really experience the difference and ultimately it's going to serve you better to really release tension here and here. Um, I know we have done some exercises for this, you can do some of the note bending stuff, you can do some singing and playing, it's really great for just freeing all of this up but this video today is really just about diagnosing and finding those problems. I mentioned this recently in a video about the flute kind of slanting downwards um, but this really is not going to help your sound, your flute sound. So if you are doing this, um, I would really encourage you to try to see the difference when you hear and when you lift up and hear the difference in that sound. This also applies to kind of your whole body posture. If your body posture is kind of like contorted or twisted in any way, it is going to have effects on your sound. So it's something to really look at if you have kind of covered everything else and you don't know where else to go. Sometimes it is actually in your body. And this really brings me to my last point, which is breathing and support. And this is something that I think we so often overlook when it comes to tone. You know, we fuss so much here and here and all over trying to create the sound we want. And we forget that our bodies are part of the instrument and that to make a big sound, we have to be using our support, our breathing and our bodies properly. I have done a bunch of videos on breathing and support. So I'm just going to kind of attach those onto the end of this video so you can go check those out. But guys, I'm really going to encourage you to explore this area. When your breathing and support come right, so much of your playing comes right. All right, everybody, that was a little bit on what is holding your sound back. I really hope that you find the solution to these problems. Remember that on Patreon, one of the rewards that I offer is to work with you guys on short little consultation sessions. These are going to be extended into um, online lessons, which are going to be offered to people that are working with me already. So if you'd like to get into the system, if you potentially are interested in the future of having online lessons or online consultations, I'm going to encourage you to check out my Patreon page. Um, go look at this reward. For now, we can really just work on finding your sound and work on finding your tone and go through some of these things and help identify problems. I do my best to help as many of you as possible. It's only one of me and lots of you, but it is the easiest for me when I can really see your playing and face-to-face -face work with you. So if you want some help, you need some help, I encourage you to go check this out. Until then, everybody, happy practicing and see you next time.